Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week we are going to get the Al Ferrari off of the rotisserie once and for all, back on the dolly and get into that bodywork, getting it ready for that final run down of paint. All right, guys, welcome back. And um, those of you who uh, might have seen my post last week will have seen that uh, I took last week off because I was just not feeling great. I had a stinker of a cold that uh, working in a cold garage just wasn't help. As you can hear, I'm still not fully over it. I'm, I'm, on, the, I'm on the tail end now. So I'm gonna take it easy over the next uh, couple of days to get an episode out for you guys and, uh, and get some progress on this car because it's, it's just tantalizingly close, close to paint and I really wanna get it done. So, um, Basically, uh, the first thing I need to do is to get this off of the rotisserie. Now that the underside is completely done and, uh, and finished the way I need it, I am very, very happy with, uh, with how, it, uh, how it looks at the moment. So it's time to uh, get it on the hoist, get the uh, rotisserie off of, uh, off of here, get the uh, dolly back underneath it, and um, then we can start looking at uh, what we're going to go from there. Let's get into it. All right, so I've spent a fair bit of time now going around and sanding back the entire engine bay with 80 grit and just fixing up any of the little minor details. I've, uh, I've cleaned up a lot of places where there was a seam sealer, as you can see, and, uh, and yeah, just getting everything just getting everything right, that last little, that last little uh, sort of 5% that takes a lot of the time uh, is worth doing. So I'm just going around now and getting that all right. And uh, I thought before I go any further, what I want to actually do is, is mask up the interior. Now, it doesn't really matter if it gets stuff on it, but it just means I have to clean it later. Um, so if I can keep this as clean as it is now, it's nice and clean and black and finished, I can seal it up, do everything I need to do on the outside, and then I can unmask it again later. So that's what I'm going to do next. Let's start masking, yay. All right, well, we are now masked up. Um, just did the sort of the quick way, just masking around the edge from the inside and then just put the plastic over and then trimmed around it with the razor blade and everything's all nicely masked up. So we can start moving back into the engine bay and seeing what we can do about uh, getting everything nice and smooth and uh, ready for some body filler. So as always, as you can see, uh, my finger through here, there's the hole, um, another hole that I have to fill. There's always more welding I need to do, um, even though I'm down to the painting stage. So um, I missed it before. I'm gonna cut out a little, uh, little piece. I've just bent a little piece up. I can stick it behind there, draw through with a, uh, with a texter, and, uh, and then get in there and weld this in and patch up that little hole. So you can see this corner is all quite nasty because there was a lot, this corner was completely mangled and I had to reshape it all and make it from scratch. So it's, uh, it's not very pleasant. So now uh, the, uh, the hole is filled. It's time to get ready for cleaning up and doing some body filler.
This is a lot of work. I've already done several coats backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards over um, just, just sanding back this filler and trying to get the engine bay nice and neat and smooth. Um, <coughs> pardon me, as you can tell, I'm still not over this cold and I'm sort of three days into this. Um, yeah, it's just very time consuming because obviously it's very fiddly, um, lots of little nooks and crannies and bits and pieces. I'm only really getting the belt line um, nice and, uh, and smooth, sort of up to about this sort of level here because below this, you can't see it. I am gonna be painting all the way down to, um, down near the bottom. <sighs> Sorry, with the, uh, uh, with the body color and the bottom will be black, but uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're getting there. It's just, just another skim, Another sand, another skim, another sand, and uh, keep working away at it. Let's keep going. Alright, so that was a lot of work. That was uh, several days of uh, layer skim on, come back, sand it back, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards to get into all of the little nooks and crannies and all of the little curves and area, at least on the top half of the engine bay, which is all going to be body colour. Um, all of these uh, bits that come out from the car, this, all this is going to go black, but this part here will all be body colour. Um, there's a lot of preparation that's gone into this, but um, it's, uh, it's looking the part. So now it's time to back it up, put it in the booth and get some primer filler on it. And uh, just for those who are wondering what sandpaper I was using, um, I bit the bullet this time and, uh, and actually went and bought, um, I, this is not sponsored, uh, but I bought these rolls of stick on 3M stuff and it sticks onto the, um, onto the foam blocks and it works great. Spending a bit more on sandpaper, the cheap sandpaper seems to just disintegrate really quickly and doesn't work, uh, doesn't last as long. This stuff seems to last twice as long and um, yeah, uh, basically a mix of 40 grit and 80 grit. Everything here is finished in 80 grit sandpaper so it's all ready to go for some primer filler. So like I said, let's back it into the booth uh, and uh, clean it up and get it ready for some primer. Alright, so um, we're getting ready to paint some primer on the car, or in the engine bay at least, and uh, what I'm using is uh, the Concept, it's a, uh, it's a 2K high build primer, this is beige, this stuff particularly, uh, and uh, the gun that I'm using, this is an Iwata uh, HTE2, it's a big 1.8 mil tip. So basically when you're getting into using a uh, high fill primer, it's a very thick paint. So if you try and use the same sort of gun that you'd use to spray uh, the paint or the clear, it's, it's just not gonna come through the tip. So you need a big um, chunky gun to do it. So for those of you who are interested in that sort of detail, that is what I'm using. Now uh, I'm gonna mix this up. Um, I think it's four to one like uh, the other stuff I've used so far. So let's mix up some primer and get some primer in that engine bay. And fingers crossed, it's starting to look nice and, uh, and smooth. This is also a high build primer, so it, uh, it will fill in any of those uh, minor scratches and things like that, but anything a bit deeper, there may be some pinholes and stuff to fix later. We can sort that out when we get to it. So uh, let's start mixing.
right, and we have the entire engine bay in primer. And it's looking really good. I am very happy with the result. Now, I did get a little bit overzealous in a couple of spots. You can sort of see some runs around the place that I'm going to have to uh, sand out, but that's okay. Uh, it just means a little, bit, uh, a little bit more work later. But overall, I'm very happy with how I managed to bring this all together and make it look quite neat and tidy from uh, basically a, quite a, a rough starting point. So that is, a, uh, that is one of the more difficult jobs to get out of the way. And this sort of work is always the most difficult of uh, sort of sanding stuff because it's all internal corners. It makes it much harder to sand and really a lot of work getting into the nooks and crannies and places. So it's just really time consuming getting into, you know, particularly uh, like, a, like a, a, a deep pocket corner, um, trying to get in there with sandpaper is very, very difficult. And uh, um, yeah, it makes the job a little bit harder, but it's worth it in the end, it was worth the time. I wanted to spend the time to make sure that this looks nice because this is the jewelry box. This is the bit that I want people to be able to look at. It's got the Ferrari engine in it, it needs to look the part. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy with the, the result. So uh, that is good for the engine bay, which means next week we'll be able to start getting onto the outside of the body and hopefully I've kicked this cold. But with that said, I think it's my time for uh, fun facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, in 1975, Ferrari replaced the 246 Dino with the 308 GTB and the Targa topped 308 GTS. The engine was a transversely mounted 2.9 litre V8 with four twin Weber carbs. It made 240 horsepower in the US due to emissions control and 255 horsepower everywhere else. European cars were built with dry sumps, whereas here in Australia and everywhere else, we got the wet sumps. Initially, the cars had fiberglass bodies weighing at 1,050 kilos, and then in 1977, they switched to building the cars from steel, which added another 150 kilos to the curb weight. The original 808 fiberglass cars remained by far the most valuable of the over 6,000 308s built. In 1980, the Webers were replaced by Bosch K-Jectronic mechanical fuel injection. Along with emission restrictions, this saw the power drop to 205 horsepower in the US and 215 horsepower everywhere else. 1982 saw the Quattro Valvoli or the four valves per cylinder release, which saw the power being pushed back up to 240 horsepower, which went some way towards replacing what the emissions control had lost. Well, um, despite not feeling the greatest this week. I managed to get a, a fair amount done. There was as of several days of work in this engine bay um, that I sort of glossed over because a lot of it is just monotonous, uh, the sort of same sort of thing, sanding, getting into tight little corners, very difficult to film. But we have a, a primate engine bay, which is a long way towards having, um, uh, you know, getting those bits done so then I can get onto the outside of the body. Um, in any case, that's... Very brave um, of you to push through man flu, which we all know yes, is... Yes, the most debilitating thing known to man. mankind. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> poor, poor Jeff. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't, <laughs> if you want to follow him a day early. I see the videos are an ad, follow him on Patreon, and um, sending healthy thoughts to everybody. Yes. All right, guys. <laughs> Have a good one. See you next week. Hey, guys. In 19... Hey, guys. In 1975, Ferrari replaced... 308 GTS topped with the Targa, no, with four twin Weber cams. Close. 1982 saw the Quattro Valvovi or the four valves. Yeah, that, that, that sounds. What? Like, like, a, like, a, like a body part. <laughs> Valvovi. <laughs> Valvoli. <laughs> Not Valvovi. <laughs> Four of them. Volvo. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> four, four Volvos. Yeah, bye. <laughs> That's scary. That is good enough. It's going to have to do. <laughs>